Good evening, and welcome to Newcastle After Dark. We are your hosts, the management. Coming to you from the land of board and arrows and bacala, bringing you films that are a feast for the mind. Tonight's film is a made-for-TV movie that you may not have seen. 1979's An American Christmas Carol, starring Henry Winkler. Uh, this also has Dorian Harewood, uh, Chris Wiggins, and uh, Susan Hogan. And, you know, originally we wanted to bring 1951's Alistair Sim version to compare it to our 1984 George C. Scott version. But unfortunately, due to copyright, we were not able to. But this one is pretty good. It is. It doesn't follow the story to the letter. No. You know, but it's a nice adaptation of the story. Yeah, it's rather loose. It is. But it's cool. It is. And, you know, Henry Winkler is the star. I mean... He was huge. Yes, he was. You know, 1979, I mean, he was the Fonz. Yes, he was. And it's quite a departure for him. It is. It is. And we think you're going to enjoy it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy 1979's An American Christmas Carol. Almost two weeks. Yes, yes, I know. I promise to speak to him, and I will. No, I will. But the moment has to be right, or... If he even knew I was talking with you now, I'm going to be late. Mr. Thatcher, it means life or death to us. I know. time of year. Payments due, accounts receivable. But if if you send him a letter, I, I'm sure he'd... Ridiculous, Thatcher. Of course I want to see the orphanage kids. Let them in. Wonderful children. Just wonderful. I see you've been practicing. Yes, sir. On that new piano, sir, it sure is a beauty. We won't talk about the piano right now, will we? On the other hand, I'm sure that a holiday gift would not be objected to. Yes, right. I had these printed at my own expense. One for you, and one for you. You're going to learn how the great men of this country, self-made men, did it all on their own. Morgan, Coolidge, Zebulon Pike, climbed that mountain hand over hand, never asked for anything. Thrift, hard work, pay your bills on time, maybe you'll have a mountain of your own someday. Remember, don't rest on your laurels if breeds decay. Don't dawdle. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, no, it's a pleasure. I like to help young people. Bye-bye. Hey, come on. Mr. Slade thinks he's really doing us a favor, you know? I mean, he really believes it. So, let's all show our appreciation for him, huh? I believe we have some visits to make. Yes, sir. You have the papers ready? Yes, sir. They're all here. Here, sir. Truck full of gas. Joe checked everything out.
morning, Mr. Reeves. Chile. I assume I don't have to tell you why I'm here. No, sir. If we could have one more extension, Mr. Slate, just a couple of months, I think we can make the payments. You think you could? Don't beg him, Jenny. He has come to do what the law allows. Nothing we can say or stop him. Thatcher. Sir? Session order. Merrimack County Court. You gentlemen. Give this to Mr. Jessup. He'll understand. Yes, sir. Memories, Mr. Slade? Well, it would be only natural. Well, the place hasn't changed much since you were a boy. May I remind you, sir, that I lived here for a year. I, I bet you remember a lot during that year. under a year. Ball games at Webster Park, chestnuts at holiday meals, and caroling on yes, the streets Yes, I know. They Christmas. came to my office this morning. Now, can we get down to business? Business? Yes. I'm afraid our situation hasn't changed very much. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that, Jessup. You shouldn't have gotten in over your head. But we needed a piano. After 42 years, the old one fell apart. We had no choice. Neither do I. Such. Such. Repossession order. Merrimack County Court. Chaucer mixed in with Plato and Socrates. Can you imagine that? When did you change your stock? 
Change it? I advanced you $5,000 for university shop. To me, that means sweaters, bow ties, ukuleles. To me, it means wisdom, Mr. Slade. With all your wisdom, have you found a way to pay your debt? Well, not all of it, but you can take all the money I have. That will. Plus, you're stuck for liquidation. A scrap paper penny a pound, huh? Better than nothing. Thatcher. Oh. Attachment order, Merrimack County Court. Is this genuine leather? It's Morocco. Yeah, it feels good. Oh, don't be a few dollars in this after all. Take everything that's leather, we'll rip it apart at the warehouse. Yeah. Not that one, sir. Please, above all, not that one. Why not? Well, it's an original edition of Mr. Charles Dickens. It was given me by my father, who got it from his grandfather, who was a friend of Mr. Dickens. It must be protected. Oh, Mr. Merrivale, you don't need books. You make up wonderful stories by yourself. Don't forget the rest in here. piece of goods. Bring it over here. Joe, make sure the garage is double locked before you go home. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas, Joe. Thatcher, I need a little assistance with the bindings here. Don't just stand there. Are you having some difficulty with your hearing? It's Christmas, sir. Perhaps... Can we talk a moment, Mr. Slade? What on earth for? Well, it's about the town, sir. It's about the times that we're going through. I know all about the times we're going through, so get to the point. Well, uh, when there were... When there was uh, money to sp When the quarry was being worked. Well, that couldn't possibly be the point. The quarry has been closed for a year. Ah, uh, no, that's just the point, sir. Now, the men who worked there, now, they've had a wonderful idea, and they've asked me to be the spokesman. So what? Well, well, Mr. Slade, since you own so much of the town, if anybody could open up the quarry again, it'd be you. Well, a man of your means. Why would I want to open a, a business that's failed? Because there's hope for the future in it, sir. Well, in the things that Mr. Roosevelt is doing, new roads, new dams, new public buildings, there's sure to be a need for granite again. Well, if you think that's true, Thatcher, then why don't you open it yourself? You should at least hear me, sir. These men have nothing left. Rebellion? Oh, no, no. If the quarry were opened up again, sir, Everyone would benefit. There'd be more business in the town. There'd, there'd be more money to spend. I mean, it would be prosperous for you, Mr. Slade. Your debtors could pay you on time, and then you wouldn't have... No, go on and say it. I wouldn't have to what? Put a gun to their heads, take their Victrolas and their lovely couches and leave them in empty houses? Oh, you really do hate me, don't you, Thatcher? No, sir. Yes, sir. I see it in those eyes every time we go out in the truck, making me out to be some kind of monster for taking what's rightfully mine. Let me tell you something, Thatcher. A man who is as soft as an old shoe is generally of little worth. Always taking the debtor's side. You hold on to those repossession papers like they were stuck to your fingers. And now you're trying to teach me business? Sir, I only... You only conspire with a gang of quarry rats to take some money out of me. 
I don't need to learn business from you. I learned it from the best, Jack Latham, the smartest businessman this state ever knew, until now. Do you know what he said to me on his deathbed? He said, Ben, never throw good money after bad. And never pay a man one penny more than he's worth. So you go back and you tell your quarry workers that their ranks of the unemployed have just been increased by one. Oh, no, sir, I didn't mean. I don't want to see your face anymore, Thatcher. Get out. I'll just get my things. Yes, you do that. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Oh, hi, honey. Mm. Oh, I'm glad you're home. You okay? Yep, Christmas tree all decorated. Mm -hmm. Well, 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 look at this activity now. But where's my Mr. T? Here's my Sarah. Who turned off the lights? Now, who would this be underneath my coat? Who is underneath my coat? It's Jonathan Thatcher! How have you been today? Fine. Why'd you bring these things home from the office? Would you excuse me a moment? I'm going to talk to your mother. rendition of Angels We Have Heard on High. Now, as a special Christmas Eve presentation... Please. I would like to read you a portion of the now famous letter that appeared in the editorial pages of the New York Sun. We need to talk. Darkness is cheap, and he liked it. But before he shut the heavy door, he walked through the rooms to see that all was all right. Sitting room, bedroom, lumber room, all as they should be. <laughs> then there was a clanking noise deep down below, as if some person were dragging a heavy chain over the casks in the cellar. He remembered that ghosts in haunted houses were described as dragging chains. Claptrap. This is an emergency. 
I'm Benedict Slade, 429 Front Street. I seem to have lost all of my power in my warehouse. Operator? Operator? Come out this minute. I know someone's here. I've got a gun. Oh, come on, Van. You wouldn't shoot your old partner, would you? You? you know damn well who I am. I know who you want me to think you are. You're on the right track. He's dead. Right again? Now, there's some trick being played here. And I know what it is. Shrewd as ever, eh, Ben? Makeup. It took six pounds of powder and paint to make that actor look like Frankenstein. That's what they said in the paper. And that's what you used makeup to make yourself look like Latham, Mr. Whoever you are. Then if I'm not Latham, I wouldn't know things only you and Latham knew? Like what? Like telling the Reverend Williams his antique deacon's bench was only a cheap reproduction, so you could snatch it up as collateral and make a profit. Shall I go on? Jack. Jack. But you're dead. Don't be afraid to say it. It's only a state of mind. That is two states. I'm in the larger one. Hell's not what you think it is. Fire, sulfur, devils with pitchforks, none of that. Thank God. It's worse. It's living in all your past all the time. Forever. There's a politician who sits in a room with all his speeches blaring at the same time. No earplugs either. And a king who has to keep staring at the faces of many sent to war. 
But you're a businessman, a very good one. You drive a hard bargain, but you've never done anything evil. Evil's not just what you do. It's what you don't do. Each day, each man has a thousand chances, but they're missed forever once they put you on the ground. But you, you can still make changes, Ben, and I'm going to help you. Don't go out of your way for me there, Jack. You're going to get three more visitations. Ghosts? Oh, that storybook talk. I think of them as conductors on the Boston main line. And you better go where they take you. Look for them, Ben. Look for them. Don't leave me now, Jack. I've got a million questions to ask you. Jack, where are you? Must have been the cheese. It must have gone off when I didn't realize it. It's just a slight touch of indigestion, that's all. It's too quiet in here, that's the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, as reported earlier, the stock market has taken a severe plunge, and investors Again? seem convinced that the market is headed for certain disaster. We are standing by for a statement from President Hoover. He will speak to the nation on the president. state of the American economy. It's Roosevelt. Our microphones are set us. up in the Oval Office of the White House, where Mr. Hoover is about to begin his address. Sources close to the White House say that Damn, Mr. Hoover will about. attempt to convince the American people. He's climbing out of the cockpit now. He throws back his goggles and jumps to the ground. Listen to that crowd. And who can blame them on this glorious day of 1927 when Charles A. Lindbergh has become the first man to fly the Atlantic Ocean? I said it was six years ago. Have waited for hours to greet the lost the mind. with the warmest welcome afforded an American ship. Nice instrument. I played a trumpet in a war a long time ago. You should have seen those walls come down. How'd you get in here? You make it sound as if I'd been away. The past is always nearby, especially here. I suppose you're going to tell me now that you are the, the spirit of Christmas past? You said it, not I. It's not going to work, you know. I know who you are, so why don't you just go back to your little silly bookstore, Maryville? Not much of a bookstore anymore. I said get out. Outside. All right. Outside. What are you doing? What's going on here? Had enough? Yes, I've had enough. Thank you very much. Get me back inside. Sorry to be so dramatic, but you did bring it on yourself. Jack said visitation's not freezing to death. What is it you want? The past wants only to be remembered. I remember the past very well without your help. Thank you. Do you remember it? Really? Or just those parts you pick out for yourself? Do you know this place? I know this place. The county orphanage. Guess we've come to a costume party. 
Guess again. Well, people have been dressed like this for 40 years. You're getting warmer. They're coming, they're coming. Boys, get ready. Everyone, get ready. Ah, here comes Mrs. Tiding. She runs the place. No, it's impossible. She's dead. She wasn't when you were here. They're the best of the lot, Mr. Brewster. Well behaved, intelligent, deserving. That's excellent, Mrs. Tidings, excellent. Of course, uh, whoever we choose for our apprentice will have to be able to learn the business from the ground up. Oh, I'm sure every one of these boys would be more than satisfactory. Who's that at the back of the room? Oh, that's Benedict Slade. Where? He hasn't been here very long. When his parents died, he was passed around among aunts and uncles. Then they turned him over to us. So skinny. Why didn't you feed me better? How is he with his hands? He fights a lot. Has he ever used tools? No. More from anger than skill. Well, at least that's a beginning. Oh, Mr. Brewster, I don't think you'd be advised to take that boy. Excuse me, Mrs. Tidings. I'd much rather do something for someone who needs rather than someone who just wants. You please bring him over to us, would you? Thank you. Mrs. Tidings convinced you. Yes, yes, she always had a way with boys. Thank you, Roy. Down you get, lad. Don't keep him here too long, Nathaniel. Remember, dinner is five o'clock sharp. We'll be there. Come on, boy. Now, your job will be to look after pieces of machinery like that, and keep them clean, keep them oiled. Of course, you'd have to uh, dust off all the furniture back there in the showroom, too. And let's see what else. Well, sweep up at the end of the day. You can see how much we need that. The most important thing Every minute you get, you watch the craftsmen. See what it is they do and how they do it. Before you know it, you might have a bench of your own. Do you think you'd like that? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You imbecile. Anybody can see this is a thriving business. I'm trying to offer you an opportunity, young man. Well, you can give it to someone else. Must have been very rough on you, Ben. Very painful for you, losing your parents like that. And then being shifted around from relative to relative. Every time you start feeling close to someone, they move you on, huh? I guess after a while, it just seems better not to get too close to anyone. And it doesn't hurt so badly when you have to leave. How could he look inside me like that? How do you know how I felt? If you want to be my apprentice, you can move right in with my family and you'll never have to move until you want to. I want to leave now. Well, that's up to you. Do you know why that is? Sure I do. It's a stick. A stick? Is that all you see here? Is it? Oh, you're not as bright as I thought you were. This is anything that I wanted to be. That could be a, a magician's wand for doing tricks. Or it uh, could be the handle of a whip for taming wild lions. I could make that into the spoke of a ship's wheel that can lead you to all kinds of new lands and new adventures. I could even carve that into a flute. And then I could play it to charm all those folks in old Hamlin Town. Here. That can be anything you want it to be. Unless, of course, you're too dumb to see anything but a stick there.
I've almost forgotten how beautiful she was. There's quite a lot you've forgotten. of finish instead of three, we can reduce oh. production by a day. You haven't heard one thing I've said. Sure I have. I've been listening. Have you? Yeah. Then you know how I was talking about the park, nature. Do you like nature, Ben? Yeah. Would you like to get really close to it? I mean really close. Would you? Yeah. Good! <laughs> oh, ow! Oh, you're gonna pay for that. <laughs> you weren't listening. You see, don't underestimate me, Helen. <laughs> well, I told him. No finishing school for me. No anything that would take me away from... from Concord. Yeah? Yeah. I'm sure after all that that you really want to get your breath back, so we're going to give out some gifts. Oh! oh. Sam? Sam Perkins. Sam! Sam Perkins. Hey. There's a message, Sam. <laughs> what every foreman needs at home. <laughs> uh, Essie! Where is Essie? Ah, thank you. Thank you, Miss Brewster. Thank you very much. What in the world have we here? To the Brewster family and all their employees, the future. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> I guess we we'll cut in and hope for the best. Huh? <laughs> well, hope I'm not damaging whatever it is. <laughs> Stapleton Furniture Company, Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> I guess the joke's on me. <laughs> That's not a joke, Mr. Brewster. Oh, did you bring this, Ben? Yes, sir, I did. What? I believe, I believe that chair is the future, and I think it can help us all if we're smart enough to use it. Oh, no. Oh, right. Right. How? That chair is not made the same way that we make ours. It's made on the assembly line. Oh, right. That's right, that's right. They're starting to use the assembly line now in furniture. Some fellow puts on one part, another fellow puts on another. They're all made by machinery. They can no. sell that no. chair for one half the price of one that we put out. Yeah, hey, but look how it's made. Nails instead of pegs, bad fittings, all sloshed with glue to keep them together. You call that a chair like ours? <laughs> <laughs> there are millions of people who won't know the difference. They'll... Yes, they will. Excuse me. They'll just look at the price tag, and that's the one that they'll buy. Oh, I, I can't accept that, Ben. <laughs> no. no, when the day of quality ends in this country, we'll all be in great trouble indeed. Here, here. 
what did you get in your, your gift there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My boy, old Robert. Your boy, so will your wife. Oh, and as ever, here, Sam, a bonus check. Light. Go inside, Helen. It's raining. So they disagreed with you. Is that such a terrible thing? You think I'm angry because he disagreed with me? That's not what? it, Helen. That's not it at all. I'm sorry for your father. I feel sorry for everyone that works for him. They're going to be passed by, and that's what I don't want to happen. Ben, then come to dinner tonight and explain yeah. it to him again. Do it for me, Ben, please. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a look at Sam Perkins' face when he lifted out yeah. those boxing? Oh, <laughs> he oh, almost man. swallowed his cigar. Mr. Brewster? <laughs> yes, sir. I know that bringing in that chair this afternoon was a smart aleck act. And I deeply apologize. Oh, Ben, that's all right. I know you meant well. I still do, sir. Whether you like it or not, mass production is coming in. In order to survive, you've got to start thinking about it. Well, I never will, Ben. I never could. I guess I'm uh, too old and too stubborn to change. I have something to say to you, all of you. The day you came into the orphanage, you saved my life, and I will never, ever forget that even when I leave here. Are you going somewhere? Oh, say it, Ben. Whatever it is, just get it out. Ed Stapleton, the man that sent the chair, offered me a job with his company in the sales division. It's not a very big job. I know that I can work myself up. Some more sweet potatoes. Helen, I don't think you understand. Oh, I hate you right now, talking to me about babies and rings and all the time knowing you were going. I didn't know until tonight. Well, you must have been thinking about it. Why didn't you say something to me? Because I was hoping I was going to change my mind. I didn't want to hurt you. I love you very much. Then take me with you. I can't. Why not? Because I'm starting low out there. I'm at the bottom rung of the ladder. And I don't even have to get enough to get myself by. Do you think that matters to me? I don't mind sacrificing. I know I mind that you sacrifice. I'll, I'll call you as soon as I'm ready, I promise. When? 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 When we can live the way I want to live, with nice clothes and a nice car and a nice house. When we walk down the street, Helen, they're going to say, there go the Slades. It's going to mean something. We're going to be somebody. I want to be somebody. Success. I guess that means just about everything to you. Are you rested now? I will be after a good night's sleep. But to tell you the truth, I'm not sure I'm not sleeping now. Now, what does that make me? The word that comes to mind, nightmare. You'll forgive me if I don't say thank you very much when you leave. Leave? You really are something. Did you think our trip was over, that I'd let you off so easily? A lifetime, Mr. Slade. A million moments of giving, taking, fighting, losing. Each moment a decision. Each decision affecting others. Each to be accounted for. Each. We 
keep very careful inventory, as you do. up until 9 o'clock this evening. It's, uh, it's $24,150. The booth will be open till midnight, so let's try and reach our goal of $25,000. Miss Brewster. Miss Brewster, I have in my hand $850. You've reached $25,000. certainly return the compliment. Oh, you money, Cliff. Thank you. Come over here and I'll write you up. You know, it's amazing. I thought about everything that I was going to say to you when I first saw you. And all I can come up with is Tandy. My dog. You wrote that he was in a terrible accident. Did he recover? Oh, yes, perfectly. That was four years ago, Ben. I really am sorry. No need to be. I'm not even sure we stopped writing first. Ben. Very nice to see you. Mr. Brewster. Well, you're certainly looking yet older, I, I know, but no wiser. I've had two heart attacks, and I still haven't the sense to quit. They were mild and generous. All right. You know, there's a way of taking it easy and still staying in business. Oh, we're easing up where I've been. The men are going off to war, and their families are spending their money on, on bombs. There's not that much left over for furniture. It doesn't matter nowadays. There's a brand new way of selling. It even works on people who don't have the price. <laughs> What's it called? St. Patrick's Miracle? Time payment. Time payment? That's very interesting. It's nice to see you. You happy, Ben? Oh, success is a wonderful feeling. People can smell it. They sense it. Especially when you're on the move. On the rise. That's why I'm leaving the Stapleton firm. I thought you were doing so well there. I was, until I ran smack into the uh, Stapleton nephews. They were saying, you know, you don't move any further unless you're related. <laughs> so I'll find another mountain to climb. Here, in Concord? It's very possible. Love to see you home. All right. Mr. Slade. 
Jack Lathan, investments in real estate. How do you do, sir? I was interested in what you were saying before about that uh, new way of selling. Could we talk sometime? I look forward to the opportunity. I was told that you'd be here at this point. Come see me just after Christmas. I'll check my calendar. Thank you. Yep, that's me. I always moved in when the moment was good. I could always smell a good business deal. So could Latham. Look where he ended up. There it is. Sometimes I find myself daydreaming about... Ben, there's something I want to say to you. You keep saying how nothing's changed and everything's the same. Well, well, we're not the same. We have changed. And if... if you stay, we're gonna have to get to know each other all over again. I totally agree with you. And as a matter of fact, I think we could start right now. <laughs> What's that? A lathe. It is. But nobody's supposed to be in there. All right. All right, you stay right here. I'll be right back. I'm going with you. Helen, please. I'm going with you, Ben. See, everything is still the same. Sam. Must be ten years at least. Now he scared me to death. <laughs> You're not the only one. What are you doing so late here on a Christmas Eve? Uh, he's catching up on a bit of work. Does my father know you're here? No, oh, he'd never allow it. But <laughs> has to be done now that half our people are gone. I appreciate what you're doing, Sam, but I want you to stop right now and go home to your family. Yes, and I agree. Just 15 minutes more. I promise. You're too good to us, Sam. Do you need a hand? For a couple of table legs? Get out of here. <laughs> Very good to see you. Good night, Sam. Bye, Ben. Bye, Helen. Merry Christmas, Sam. figures written up for you as soon as possible, then, Jack. Oh, there's no hurry. Well, there is for me. Ben. I'm very sorry to hear what happened. Oh. Well, I'm such a smart businessman, Ben, that I went and let the insurance policy lapse. <laughs> Can you believe that? Well, we'll, uh, we'll get the old place rebuilt again someday with luck and help the good friends. Take care of yourself, okay? Always, always. Come on in. Nice to see you. Mm. 
May I help you? Thanks. Are you all right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm fine. Time payments, you called it? That or the installment plan. Customer makes a down payment of maybe 10%. Goes home with the product. Pays it off a little each month, plus interest, for about a year or two. By the time he's finished, you've got 150% of the purchase price. What happens if he can't make the payments? If he's working, you attach a salary. If not, repossess it, take it back, sell it again. It's not unheard of that you can get 200% of the list price. I like it. But well, that don't mean I'm going to invest. A scheme like that takes a lot of capital. And everyone knows that you are the most powerful money man in these parts, sir. <laughs> well, that's just the trouble. My money's spread all over the place. Everyone making demands. Take old man Brewster. Banks turned him down, so he came to me. Wants 100000 to rebuild his shop, maybe more later. Can't do that and finance your scheme, too. If I might make a point, sir. Mr. Brewster is a wonderful man, and I owe him a lot. But he's been doing the same thing for 40 years. He won't even look at a new idea. And I sincerely believe that he wasn't doing that well before his loss. Told me he was climbing back. Not to overstep my bounds, but if it were my money to invest, and I had the choice between a rigid old and the innovative new, there would be no contest. I didn't make that decision, Latham did. I wouldn't hurt your father for all the money in the world. If I'm lying, if I am lying, then let my eternal soul be damned. Welcome back. You know, starting to watch this, you know, it uh, being that it's a different era and the characters are actually named differently mm -hmm. and there are subtle differences here and there, it's kind of throwing me off a little bit. Well, it is, you know, I mean, you don't have Ebenezer Scrooge, right? You have Benedict Slade. Right. We don't have uh, Bob Cratchit. We have Thatcher, you know. Right. On and on. Um, but, yeah, it is, it is a little different. Yes. It is a little different. And, uh, you know... The interesting thing about Henry Winkler is that at the time, 1979, he was a huge TV star. I mean, happy days. Yeah. And uh, he chose this role because it was such a departure from what he was playing. Yeah. You know, the cool guy. Right. The, you know, the, the main hip dude. Right. And he does a pretty good job so far of playing a rotten oh, dude. Oh, yeah. And that is a big departure. I mean, you remember, you know, I mean, the Fonz, you know, heartthrob, good-looking guy. Right. You know, taking on this, you know, old man, crotchety, old, penny-pinching old man. Yeah. You know? Well, I do got to say, though, I mean, he was under a lot of prosthetic makeup, but whoever did that mustache when he come in with that loop, you know, had that stack of Tubmans. He come in looking like Chuck Negron. From Three Dog Night. From Three Dog Night. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One is the loneliest number. He does, doesn't he? But you know, 
who does uh, the makeup there, or at least was a consultant for it, I believe, was Rick Baker. He did American Werewolf in London. He did, he did Harry and the Hendersons. I think he had, uh, uh, when he was younger, had worked on Star Wars. Yeah. And, I mean, so many other things. Yeah. And, it, and, it, it, and it really shows there. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, it does. And the other thing that stood out to us was uh, Mr. Brewster is Chris Wiggins. And you may be asking yourself, why am I remembering this dude? Well, he was in the TV series Friday the 13th. That's right. Which, you know, we all watched. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. But we knew it. He was like, I know him. Yeah, I remember yeah. him. And that's it. We had to think about it. We did. Yeah, yeah, you know what we did. Um, this was directed by Eric Till, uh, who had worked on uh, a lot of TV movies and shows. Um, you remember he had worked on uh, Fraggle Rock, remember that yeah. was an HBO Fraggle show. Yeah, Rock was good. Wasn't it, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was. Um, and I believe he had also done uh, the Muppets, I think it's uh, Muppets Family Christmas. Really? Yeah. Wow. I like yeah. the Muppets. Oh yeah, so do I. You know, uh, the screenplay is uh, by Jerome Coopersmith, who again, you know, had, had done a lot of work with television. Um, he'd worked on Hawaii Five-0, Streets of San Francisco, and um, he did the animated. It was it was the night before Christmas. Oh yeah, remember with the mice. That's right. Yeah, he lived in a grandfather clock. That's right. They don't show that too often. No. Yeah. No, but that was good. It was. Yeah. But you know, I think that uh, with the changes, I'm still with it, man. I'm yeah. Still with it. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm still. Yeah. Involved in the story. I am too. So let's get back to an American Christmas Carol. I didn't tell your father. I didn't tell him. Mr. Slade, come in. But oh, you better put that down. You break it, you'll hear from me. Get off there. Get off there. You're wasting your time, Jessup. This isn't going to work. Christmas has worked for 2,000 years. It's working now. I suppose you're going to tell me that you're some great spirit of the Christmas present. You do have an interesting way of putting things. Yes, but then you put it right out of your mind. Because you, I don't know how you got in here, but you're not going to leave with my piano, repossessed by court order. It belongs to me. Then you're entitled to the music you like best. Do you have any favorite selections? Yes, I do. My privacy, which I shall enforce by calling the police. I'm going to close my eyes for 15 seconds, and when I open them, you, you best be.
You can't block out the Christmas spirit. It's everywhere. What do you want from me? Only to share this beautiful holiday with you. As someone else might have done. Someone else? You should look familiar, Mr. Slade, like mother, like daughter, they say. That's Helen's child. We're in Helen's house? You never kept track of her, did you? She married a pharmacist, very happy, too, as you can see for yourself. Fulfilled is always beautiful. Come, Mr. Slade, it's a private moment for them. found on dry river beds and on trails long overgrown by weeds. What's more important are the paths we follow now. I know this place. I've never been here before. Why does it look so familiar? A picture, maybe? On my office wall, my employee over his desk. Your former employee, remember? He deserved to be fired. Disagrees with everything I do inspires with others to pull money out of me. Who needs someone like that around? There are three in here who do. Mom, Dad, please tell us what's wrong. Nothing's wrong, dear. And I don't want us to feel bad. We're just trying to guess. We make up all kinds of things. My goodness, can't your father and I have a secret without the world coming to an end? The radio station WBZ in Boston. We continue now our concert of marches for this Christmas Eve. I lost my job today. Is that all? We thought it was something worse. That you killed somebody with an axe and we're going to be hung. There's someone I'd like to kill with an axe. Now you don't mean that, Doris. You'll, you'll get another job, won't you, Daddy? Yes, I will. Of course. Eventually. As a matter of fact, I happen to be considering one at the very moment. What is it? I have been offered the job of exalted Grand Master of the Barnman Bailey Circus. My only problem is, do I take it? Yes! Yes! My very sentiments, exactly! Ladies and gentlemen, the Barnum and Bailey Circus presents the Flying Adventures! Hey, sir, I bet I can beat you in Chinese checkers. Yeah. 
The boy, was he in an accident? If it were only that. I suppose the trip for Jonathan's out of the question now. Australia and $128? Well, supposing we sold the house and the furniture and everything. There's no market for houses. The furniture gets as far as Columbus, Ohio. What does it have to be Australia? Maybe there's some other place that... You heard the doctor. Only one clinic offers any real hope, Sister Kenny's. Her new way of stimulating the muscles Get some going again so the children like John can lead out their normal lives. Well, then Australia it'll be. You'll find... Jonathan, are, are you all right? I'm okay. He gets out of breath so easily. You'll find some work. Maybe in Boston. And so will I. If we work night and day, he'll have that trip. There's something I must know. What's that? The little boy. Does he live or die? Is that important to you? Yes, it's important. The future's a tricky place, full of shadows, shifting and changing, as present realities do. Do you see these shadows? As well as most, and better than some. And what do they say to you? Next Christmas, I see a pair of crutches in the corner, carefully preserved. At this table, family, mother, father, little girl. Between them, there's an empty chair. the dread disease of polio, once known as infantile paralysis. Congratulatory messages have flooded in from around the country. Fight for my She'd never replace the Victrola, that's for sure. And who will replace you, Mr. Slade? Hold your ground. Hold your ground. You can have the radio back. It's okay. Take it back to the farm, free of charge. Do I look like a farmer to you? Uh, modern. Modern? Mo more than modern. More than modern. Uh, future. F You're the, the spirit of Christmas future? You know, I, uh... I don't think you really believe it. I do. I do. Indeed, I do. Well, you'd better, Mr. Slade. Yes, I do. The future is coming, whether you like it or not. The distant future. And a future much closer to you. Where are you going? Items 27A and B. Bronze bookends. Just feel the weight of those. They're beauties. What am I bid? Who's going to give me $2 to start? 15 cents. 15 cents. I got 15 cents here. 25. 25, 25, 25 is a bid. 
I beg your pardon. Who are all of these people, and what are you doing on my property? It's all quite legal, I assure you. A dollar once, a dollar twice. Beyond a dollar, sold for a dollar. <laughs> You're selling them very cheap. Those bookends are worth three ninety-five. Well, he's got to get rid of everything. Sheriff's orders. Oh, there's a nice bed made of pure mahogany with a box spring and a mattress, two suits of clothes size 40, five shirts, six ties, three pairs of shoes, a tie clasp, cufflinks, and a money clip. And what a money clip. What am I bid for the lot? Are they crazy? This is quality merchandise. Very much like my own possessions. I bid $500, not a penny less. Uh, he can't hear you. $1,000 worth every bit. No bids? Uh, bid 10 cents for the lot. <laughs> <laughs> bid high, isn't it? <laughs> I find this very distasteful. It gets no better, Mr. Slade. These prices are beginning to make sense. Hundred dollars once, hundred dollars twice. Any more? Sold for hundred dollars. when I'm heading home that I still expect to find him waiting behind the doorway. And then I remember that he's here. My little Mr. T. Hard to believe that a year's gone by since he left us. That boy. That shouldn't surprise you. Life is cause and effect. And you were certainly no stranger to the cause. That hasn't happened yet. That is not real. The grief of those people is real. You can't blame me for something I didn't know. Thatcher, tell her. Tell her I didn't know you had a sick child. You never said a word. We know there's going to be other partings among us. A marriage. Long voyages. Even death again. But when someone is remembered with love, their spirit never really dies. So instead of looking for someone to blame, let's make a promise to each other. That no matter where we find ourselves in years to come, together or apart. 
we will always remember little Jonathan. You promise? If I had known, things could have been different. Perhaps the possibility exists that it could be different. Is that possible? That's not for me to say. We better go now. something about this place. Something that draws me right to it. The monument looks fairly new and yet neglected. No one visits that grave. Not ever? Not ever. To lie in a, in a grave, unloved and unremembered. It's as if the life was never lived. That is the only real death. Who is the unfortunate person? Take a look. Tell me that this can change. I don't want to lie here in, an, in a grave, unremembered and unloved forever. Please tell me it could change. I'm willing to make a change. It's time to go, Mr. Slade. You've seen the future. I'm willing to make a change. I want it to happen differently. about that? Just answer the question. Don't you know it's Christmas? It's Christmas. It's Christmas. There's still time. There's still time. Christmas to you, sir. What are you doing here? I'm working, of course. What are you doing? You're taking the whole day off, regardless of all the work that has to be done? But I'm not your employee anymore, sir. Don't you tell me who you are. 
I know more about you than you could possibly dream. Now go out to the truck and get what I've got for you. Come on. Come on. You and I have a very important business discussion. What business? What's on the menu for today's dinner? Chicken, carrots, vegetables. How big is a chicken? Five pounds. Five Why pounds. You... you call that a holiday chicken? <laughs> now you try this. Put this in the oven if it fits. If it doesn't, cook it twice. Thank you. These are called Christmas gifts, and to find out... For us? Is it all right if I finish first? Thank you. And to find out who they're for, you just look for the name on top of the box. For Daddy? Yes. For Mommy? For Mommy and Daddy? For me? Thank you. I've been here for Jonathan. How could that be? Sorry. Oh. What's this? Could this possibly be? Uh, it's not very large. Not very heavy. You like to ride on a bus? You do? <laughs> Here's a ticket on a bus to Boston. You like to ride on a train? Here's a ticket from Boston to Chicago, from Chicago to San Francisco, California. Oh. You like to travel on a ship, big boat? You do. <laughs> Here's a ticket for the SS Monterey from San Francisco, California to Sydney, Australia. And in Australia, there's a clinic run by a sister, Elizabeth Kenny, and I have a darn good feeling that she's going to make you feel very good. Of course, there'll be a nurse to go along with them. You just have to get used to an empty place at the table, that's all. When he gets back, the boy will be sitting here in this chair that... Doesn't need crutches anymore. Mr. Slade, I, d I don't know what. To... Whoops. Yeah. Oh. All right, that's enough of that. It's enough. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You have a lot of cooking to do. At least four hours for that bird. Four hours. Which gives you plenty of time before dinner. Merry Christmas. Let's go get you. I assume you expect to be paid for these few extra hours of work, huh, Thatcher? Oh, no, 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 Mr. Slade. You should expect to be paid. You must start thinking like an executive, Thatcher. Vice president in charge of new projects is nothing to sneeze at. New projects? Yes, I was thinking of opening up the granite quarry down at Pentecost Hills. Bring a few hundred jobs into this town. And that's just the beginning. What's going on? No, Mr. Reeves. It's what's coming off. A pot-bellied stove, a rocking chair, and a tabletop radio repossessed by you. Grab something. of that radio. It's acting very peculiar. Mrs. Reeves. Mrs. Reeves. 
a very Merry Christmas. Indeed. Thatcher, miles to go. I have the truck. <laughs> Now, don't be alarmed. There's a few bindings of burr are ripped on top, but that's what they're in business for in the first place. In business? Yes, the Kendall Book Binding Company of Cambridge. I spoke to Mr. Kendall himself. He's sending a man here on Monday. All books to be restored, good as new, guaranteed. <laughs> Especially that book that uh, your father gave you. Your grandfather. Uh, never mind, I told him to take especially good care of that one, and I have something for you. A very Merry Christmas, Mr. Merrick. Did you read that book, Mr. Slade? Did I read that book? The uh, Ghosts of Hell, the Spirit of Christmas Past, Present, and Future. Absolute, unadulterated. What was the word he used? Humbug. Mr. Thatcher, please. It's a wonderful thing you've done, just in time for our Christmas party. Uh, looks like it turned out that way. <laughs> Thatcher, the other item on the truck, please. Yes, sir. And what do you intend to do on your holiday? Oh, I'm not doing anything that special. Well, you're more than welcome to join us here. That's a very nice invitation. Thank you. That boy over there, who is he? That's Harry. Harry Barnes. We have a problem. In what way? Well, he's been in a number of foster homes. He always manages to have himself kicked out for some outrageous behavior. Likes to get into fights. Uses his hands a lot. That's right. Likes to work with tools. Yes, but always in a hostile way. How did you know that? I understand that, boy. Here we are, sir. Good, good, good. Put them under the tree. Now, Jessup, Present, do me a favor, everyone. will you? Present. Tell that young lad I'd like to take him for a drive. Well, he's been acting lately. He doesn't just... Just do this for me, please. Come on down. I can persuade him. Now, you listen to me, my fine friend. You've been invited to go for a ride, and I'm bigger than you are. So here are your choices. You can either leave with me smiling, or I'll pull you out of here, kicking and screaming, which will not make a good impression on your friends. Then you have ten seconds to make a decision. where you come in, Harry. I need an apprentice, someone to oil the machines, make sure they're in working order, sweep up. What do you think about that?
and I'm offering you a present and a future with a promise, Harry. Oh, I promise they will be different. Can we go now? If you can tell me what this is. It's a stick. It's a stick. Well, my friend, you're not as smart as I thought you were. If all you see there is a stick, I could make this into anything I wanted to be. To me, it is a, a baseball bat. It's a, a whip handle. Tame young lions, huh? Spoke of a ship's wheel. Taking me to new, new lands. New treasures. Harry, you can make this into anything you want. Well, maybe you can't because all you see is a stick. Do you have a knife? No. Now you do? What are you going to make? You'll see. Is that a towel bar? Chair leg. Jessup invited me to the home for dinner. How's the food? Pretty bad. <laughs> Always was. You know, when you become my apprentice, uh, you're gonna live with me. Very much like a foster son. Well, give me a chance, boy. Give me a chance. of an American Christmas Carol. And the thing that I have to say is I wasn't entirely sold on this film until we got to about the end. Yeah. And the emotional power of Henry Winkler's performance, it, it moved me. It is. It really you know, is moving. It is. You know, it is. I mean, as he's handing out uh, the gifts to everybody and he you know, comes to uh, Jonathan Thatcher 
uh, Tiny Tim. Yes. Right. Um, he says, you know, it's, it's not very big. It's right. You know, but he basically, you know, had paid for all his passage to get to Australia to have his um, treatments. Treatments. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, and it was very understated of a performance. You know, he wasn't chewing up scenery. And, no. And I appreciate that. You know, it was very subtle. Yes. And, you know, like when the ghost, well, vision right. of Christmas present shows him his lost love and what he could have had. And he says, I could have had a child like that. Right. And just one sentence is, you know, I know that was in all the tales. Right. But right. it's very understated. It is. And... I appreciate that. Oh, definitely. And you know, Henry Winkler um, almost didn't take this role because um, he was worried about doing it justice. And that tells you everything about Henry Winkler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It because does. Because that shows you how important this role was to him and right. for him to do it justice. Yes. So, yeah. And I believe he did do it justice. I do, too. Yes. I do, too. And, you know, I think Jerome Cooper Smith did a good job of screenwriting. Uh, I think... The lines that he had written for Latham. Yeah, you know, um, there's there's some great lines in there. Uh, you know, we're talking about, you know, what is hell? And he says, you know, hell is having to, rel- to relive your past every day. Every day. You know, I mean, you know, think about it. I mean, what would be more frightening than that of all the things you could have or should have done and didn't do while you were here? Yeah. Right? And I think it's relevant today because I think that some people are living that. Yeah. Hell. And that's why the holidays aren't a pleasant time, as they should be. Right. You know, you should be able to enjoy the treasure of your friends and family. Some people don't have that. Right. And therefore, they become very bitter. Yeah. And instead of making the choices to perhaps change for the better, right. improve their situation, they don't do it. Right. Because of fear. Yeah. And it's heavy. It That's is heavy. heavy, you know. It is. It is. And like we said, no, you know, it is the it, it you know, it's not uh, you know straight from the book. No. You know, doesn't you know follow it verbatim. No. You know. No. But it's a wonderful retelling of the story. It really is. It is. And you know, I gotta say that I gotta chuckle at the part when he turned on the radio and uh, you know, Electric Avenue was playing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was on there. <laughs> you know, but it was you know certainly. It would have been funny if it had been some Bob Marley. (laughs) (laughs) Right? And you know, this is less of a ghost story uh, than the original. Yes. Because because they're really not ghosts, are they? No, only Latham was a ghost. Right. Everybody else was more of a representation. Right. Like the Wizard of Oz. I guess so. You know? Yeah. That's kind of what I related. Right. Right. but it still works. Yeah, it works. It does work. Yes. Yeah, it was very, still, still very enjoyable. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, we thank you for being here with us at Newcastle After Dark. We hope you join us again for the Lost Treasure in Cinema. And until next time, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.